All right, welcome back. So now we're set and ready to create our first machining operation. And like I've said, I need to create the machining operation for this geometry right here. So this geometry is going to wrap around my parameter of the cylinder and it's going to machine it. And uh, this is it goes for anything that you want to machine all around a cylinder. Uh, you basically, again, you need to draw geometry that exceeds a little bit exceeds the geometry or the parameter of the part remember i showed you in the earlier exercise how to uh, calculate the parameter of a cylinder and how to uh, figure out how long you want your geometry to be for example if i place this to my top view you need to make sure to draw out the length of the parameter and then add a little bit more that's why i left this here because from here to the point of the geometry down here is the length of the parameter around my cylinder but you want to exceed it a little bit more this allows the tool to go a little bit further down and machine uh, the part all the way around for you okay it's always a good habit to do that so let's go ahead and get started so this is very easy a lot easier than you think uh, you just want to go to toolpath and select contour all right we're going to call this exercise number three And we're going to select two things. The first thing we're going to select is a point. So go ahead and select the point system over here and select your first point. Now you want to go back to chain and select your chain starting right here and going all the way around. So you notice that this chain ends from here to here. Now you want to go back and select the next chain, which is next to it. And it wraps from here to here. And then last but not least, you want to select the last chain, which is from here to here. So now you have your entire chain all the way from the start to the finish okay now this is very important to do um, now I can easily show you as well maybe I'll show you later on in another video that if I choose to go through this path uh, where the issues reside and you will see that it does not machine all around your part if you decide to select it so let's go ahead and make sure everything like this is selected and select okay select contour okay and go to the tool now we're gonna select a one inch flat end mill now I already have filtered for that tool if you don't have filtered for that tool again this is very easy go to select library tool go to filter make sure only flat and mill is selected and you want to make sure to equal to one inch okay and select okay you will select your one inch flat end mill and select okay now it will tell me it's duplicate that's because i already have it in here so i'm going to say no so because i don't want to add two one inch flat end mills in my tool library and over here we can say machine parameter of cylinder. Okay. Now this one is really going to be called contour toolpath axis substitution. It's another axis substitution exercise. So we're just getting a little bit more used to it with all these exercises. I'm showing you all the different ways you can use axis substitution to machine your part. Okay. Um, you can call it whatever you want, but you can call it uh, the better name maybe is contour uh, around using access substitution or whatever you feel that would give the operator or the user a better explanation of what you're machining. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to holder. I'm going to keep that as a default holder for all of my exercises again. Um, so I'm going to leave it at that. Cut parameters. Now we're going to leave the comp computer to compensate uh, and calculate the compensation for the cut parameters. So leave it at that. We're going to leave the compensation direction as the left hand. So the machine, the, the tool will always be on the left hand of the geometry. The tip compensation is always going to be to the tip of the tool, especially with a flat end mill. You want to make sure that's the case with any with really most of the tools, most of the machining that you do. I almost never have to change this. So uh, this usually always stays as the tip roll cutter around corners. You want to roll the cutter around sharp corners. Um, very uh, also very rarely do we change this from sharp to anything else so keep it at that internal corner radius and now these are not sufficient for what we're machining uh, so keep those at zero and the stock to leave uh, on walls on floors again this is for if you want to leave some stock to come back and do a finishing operation later now for us I'm not worried about that this is something you would learn a lot more of in a regular milling DVD so I'm gonna leave those as zero I'm not going to be doing roughing and finishing operation. Very rarely will I do that in this DVD because I just want to really concentrate on showing you guys how to use these features. Uh, the roughing and finishing is more uh, concentrated in my mill DVD. Okay. And contour type, we're going to keep that as 2D. 
let's go to the depth cut. For the depth cut, go ahead and select it. And we're going to cut 0.4 inches down, okay? So maximum rough step, this is the maximum rough step that it takes. So the maximum amount it can cut at once is going to be uh, 0.4. Now, if you uh, we're using a one inch tool, so really uh, the, the, the biggest or the largest suggested rough step I usually like to take is half an inch, half the diameter of the tool. So 0.4 is playing it safe. And this is if you want to leave some finishing cuts uh, towards the bottom, if you want to leave one finish cut, usually it's a good habit to do one finishing cut of about 50 thou uh, at the end, okay? And you also want to select keep tool down for that. This way it keeps the tool down as it's machining everything, all right? Uh, lead in and lead out. You want to make sure that tangent is selected, okay, for how you want your tool to come in and come out of the part. Now, we don't have to, we're going to uh, keep the length at zero, and the arc at zero as well. And the reason for that is because we're bringing the tool in from the top. We're not bringing it in and machining, for example, a side of a part. We're bringing it from the top. So really, we don't care uh, how much it comes in, the length of the tool and how, how, how big of a radius it takes to come in. It just wants to come in and dig in to your part. So these are insufficient. And one very important point is to select the use entry point. Use the entry point is the point that we've used to start our machining. Remember, we've created this one point right here. So you want to make sure to select use entry point whenever you uh, select, you have a point that you selected to start the machining. Now, don't forget to copy everything using this button right here to the exit. So everything in the entry also is the same for the exit. All right, we're not breaking anything through. So make sure to keep that uh, unchecked and go to multi passes. Under multi passes, let's go ahead and select three multi passes of quarter of an inch in spacing each. Okay, so every quarter of an inch, it machines, it, it'll go over and machine a little bit more. Now, it's probably even better to really do it around 0.4. This way, your part machines a little bit more. Remember, your tool is an inch in diameter, so you want it to machine as much as possible to finish the machining process as fast as possible. Okay. So when it's doing this, this is actually more important for me to keep the tool down when it's going uh, uh, back and forth, back and forth around the part. You don't want it to machine, go up, start again, go down, machine, go up, come back down, machine. So that's why you want to keep the tool down at all time whenever you're doing multi-passes. In the depth cut, this is where you don't really um, have to keep the tool down. It actually might give you issues over here if you keep the tool down. Uh, as it gets deeper and deeper to keep the tool down. It's actually kind of nice whenever you machine a level for the tool to come up and come back down and, and not just machine and then dig in a little bit more as it stays in there. Sometimes it overheats that one little area a little bit too much. So uh, I'll go ahead and uncheck that. Let's go to Lincoln parameters and go ahead and check clearance height. We'll keep that at two inches. We'll keep the retract at 0.25, feet plane at 0.2, and I'm going to leave the top of the stock at around 0.25, okay? And I'm going to change the depth cut to negative half an inch. So I'm machining half an inch into my part. And I want to leave, I told that my top of my part is a quarter of an inch because I want to leave a little bit of room above my cylinder so the tool can come in safely and, and then, you know, starts digging in. Remember, I told it to dig in 0.4 at a time. So uh, my first one will still be, a little bit, it'll dig in a little bit before it starts machining. Because I selected quarter of an inch, so my first, I already know my first machining operation is 0.4 minus the 0.25. My first path is gonna machine about 0.15 of material before it starts digging in the rest. Remember the depth cut, I said it's 0.4. So this, this is uh, something that might confuse some people and might not, and I wanna make sure that you guys understand it correctly. Remember the max rough step is 0.4. So the first step is going to be 0.4 until the last step is 0.05. So if I told it, uh, oops, sorry about that. Um, if I go back to Lincoln parameters and I told it that my top of the stock is 0.25. So my first one that it, want, it digs into from 0.25, so somewhere in the air, it thinks the top of the stock is right here. Say from here to here is a quarter of an inch. So it's going to dig in the first one 0.4. So obviously 0.4 is greater than 0.25. So 0.4 down it's going to go underneath the part or into my cylinder, 0.15, okay? And last but not least, go to rotary, axis control, go to axis substitution, and make sure to change that to clockwise and change the diameter to 4.0, which is the diameter of your part. Select apply and select okay.
and I'm going to rotate my part and you can see my machining operation is taking place. So let's go ahead, verify that and see how that looks like. So I'm in Mastercam simulation and I'm going to go ahead and just press play. And as you can see, your part comes in. Now, so this, that first step, if I press stop, that first step that it dug in right here, from here to here, that's what I'm talking about being that 0.15. So from here to here is 0.15. And then again, from here to here is that 0.4. So my first step, it, it thought that my top of the stock is 0.25 because I told it this is where the top of my stock is. So it starts machining the first step, which is a rough step. And really all it could machine is that 0.15. And then again, comes in to machine that 0.4 in the next one. So I'm going to go ahead and press play. And you can see that your cylinder is going back and forth, machining back and forth all the way around. Uh, this is the first side. So it's focusing on the right side first. And as you can see, It'll come back and then it'll start machine, machining the left side over here. There you go. So right here, I already see that there's an issue over here. As you can see, there's an issue that um, it, my tool has machined a little bit extra and it probably, did, I didn't allow the tool to move up enough. As you can see, my tool is dug in and it and it moved up and was rotating around basically as it's machining. Okay, the reason I know that is you can see how the right side is machined good, but the left side is not. So towards the end, while it's trying to finish everything, the tool wasn't wasn't going up enough, wasn't wasn't going back enough. And I'm gonna keep this in here so I can show you how to fix it. So I'm gonna exit out of here, go back from my, my parameters. And usually that kind of issue is linked to the Lincoln parameters. So we're going to go to Lincoln parameters and you're going to notice one very important aspect over here um, that the retract, I already changed it in the feed plane. So right now, uh, if you remember, it used to be on 0.25 and 0.2. Okay. Now I want to change it uh, prior to actually continuing this video to test out where my issue is this so I can explain it a little bit more. So when we created the Lincoln parameters, I, I had a clearance of two, the retract to 0.25, feed plane is 0.2, and then top of my stock is 0.25. So see where my issue is? I created this very fast and I didn't realize that th this can't be true. The top of the stock and the retract can't be on the same level. Okay, the top of the stock is here. You don't want your tool to retract to the same uh, area of the top of the stock, especially not incremental. So if you have this on incremental, you know, th say it d dug in about half an inch in depth. And now it's going back up a quarter of an inch as the retract height. Well, that is where my issue was. My issue was it was retracting uh, to a height where it was still inside of your cylinder. So that's why it, uh, having a 0.25 as incremental especially is, uh, is not right. Uh, you would actually want to change this to at least one inch. And I'm also going to change the feet plane to 0.5. So now my retract height all the time is one inch. And, uh, or I'm sorry, absolute is one inch. So that means even if it machines the entire depth of my cylinder, which is half an inch, it's actually going to go back up one inch over my cylinder uh, or half an inch over my cylinder at the deepest level. So if it's digging in the deepest, which is a half an inch, it has to go back up one inch, which is incremental of that depth. And that would be half an inch over my part, which plays it safe. So now I'll go ahead and select apply and okay. And let's go ahead and verify that operation again and select play. And you can see how my tool is, if I slow this down a little bit, how my tool is actually retracting up about half an inch over my part, which is the same depth that I'm machining, but it will retract half an inch. And this is the full retract with this two inches the clearance height, which is two inches over my part. But as you can see, very nice and smooth machining all around my part. Really nice. This is the, this is what I want to see. Everything looks good. Okay. And I'll try to keep doing this. If I make a mistake or if something doesn't work, I like to leave it in the video. That's a very good way for you to learn. Uh, I know a lot of uh, my students from in the past before uh, suggested that I keep those errors in my videos. They really like that. Uh, they have a lot of errors occur while they're programming their own parts and they just don't know how to fix them. And so uh, if there are too many errors in here, I'm sorry, but this is a good way to learn how to fix these errors 
and uh, go on with your problem. This is the a better way to do it. There's no one that can create a problem or a program that is perfect the first time. It's it's near impossible. As you can see, even that's something that I've practiced. I still make that error. I still make an error uh, uh, teaching it, and I want to show you guys how to repair that. Sometimes I go through a little bit too fast, and I want to make sure that this is how to go back and uh, fix an issue like that. So um, that concludes the counter machining, and the next thing we want to do is machine the slot that we have on top. So we'll do that in the next video.